I'm going to start off by sharing with you an amazing story. I heard from my amazing spiritual teacher, Matt Kahn. A spiritual ego was driving an enlightened Buddha to a specific destination. The enlightened Buddha was sitting in the passenger seat and the spiritual ego was very meticulous how he drove, how he remained calm whilst he was driving. They drove over a bump. The spiritual ego just carried on driving, remaining calm and collected, perfectly intact. A car drives past and nearly clips the vehicle as the spiritual ego holds on with death's grip. The spiritual ego then says, I forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Buddha reaches over to the horn and hunks the horn. And he says, That jerk, he should have been more careful. The spiritual ego turns to him and says, Why did you do that? Why did you say that? The Buddha turns to him and says, Things aren't what you think they are. In other words, be yourself. Accept yourself. Be forgiving towards yourself. And don't become who you're not. Don't clench your teeth and hold back that what you want to say. All in the name of being who you're not. I'm going to now carry on and speak about the different affirmations Different mantras, the different quotes, however you want to refer to it, different quotes which I mentioned yesterday from three amazing spiritual teachers. So I'm going to start off with Matt Kahn's quote, and he says as follows Despite how open, peaceful, and loving you attempt to be, people could only meet you as deep as they've met themselves. And this goes to yourself as well, if I may add. Despite how amazing you have ascended on this amazing spiritual ascension journey, beware that you can only meet yourself as far as you've already met yourself. And if you're not forgiving towards yourself, if you're not perfectly loving towards yourself today, that's okay. You're on a spiritual path. You're on a spiritual journey. It's okay. And I also mentioned yesterday the amazing quote, from Macron, which he says, within which he says, you attract what you judge until you no longer judge what you attract. What does that mean? When you judge what you attract, that's the problem. Love yourself. Remember the story with the enlightened Buddha and the spiritual ego. Remember that story. Remember what it means. It means accept yourself. And if a jerk cuts you off while you're driving, don't worry if you call them a jerk. Don't worry if your consciousness was not perfectly intact. I started off my spiritual journey listening to spiritual teachers who had hundreds and thousands. Some of them had millions of followers, subscribers on YouTube. And I was impressed. And they said, we don't have an ego anymore. We've let go of our ego. I was always impressed. Nonetheless, I said to myself, okay, they have let go of their ego, but they still have, and they're still talking about having subscribers. So obviously they have some kind of ego. Otherwise, why would they be banking on subscribers? I have hence decided that I'm on the spiritual path, I'm on the spiritual ascension journey, but I still have an ego. And that ego is not somebody I'm going to squash. That ego is not somebody I'm going to be ungrateful for. Before I arrived in my spiritual ascension journey, I had an ego. Yes, today it's more of a passenger in a car. Nonetheless, I still have an ego. I'm not going to be ungrateful to my past. 
I'm not going to be unkind to my past. I'm going to be forgiving towards myself. I'm going to be remembering. And I will remember my past. Because if you forget your past, your present doesn't have the same value. Another amazing thing I saw from Eckhart Tolle. He says, the primary cause of an and this I've mentioned yesterday as well in the 20 quotes, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but how you think about it, how you translate it, and how you allow it to sit on you. I think it's a powerful, I mean, I've expanded on the actual quote, which is um, the primary cause of, of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thoughts about it. I just expand a little bit on that quote. He also says, sometimes letting things go is an act of far greater power than defending or hanging on to it. I remember how I used to hang on to situations. I used to expect from people who were deeply in pain. I used to expect from them to be more forgiving. I used to expect from them to be reconciling. I used to expect them to reconcile and understand where I was coming from. Not realizing that... They're in pain. Their trauma has affected them, possibly for life. If they're not going to ascend on a spiritual journey, their trauma quite likely has affected them for life. Is it for me to judge? Is it for me to judge? Not for me to judge. The moment you stop judging another, the moment you realize that somebody else who's hurt you is talking from a place of pain, from a place of trauma, from a place of being little and tiny from within, yeah, tiny from within, that is the moment you'll get off and fly on your spiritual ascension journey. I want to now talk about Jessica Madden's amazing quote. It might sound funny, but it's a powerful quote from Jessica Madden. It reads as follows, relying upon others to validate you is akin to smoking weed. It's a drug. Relying on somebody else to validate you, despite the fact that that person might be busy today, despite the fact that that person can't validate you because they suffer trauma. And because they suffer trauma, they can only belittle people thereafter. They can only be critical towards people thereafter. They can only find the bad in others thereafter. They can only trample upon people. That's the only means of coping. That's the only means of doing anything in life, right? So actually banking on, actually relying upon, actually being dependent upon the validation of another is like smoking weed. You get hooked onto it. And when you wean off it, it's exactly the same. It takes time to wean off it. Be nice to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gracious towards yourself. Be very positive towards yourself when you're taking time to get over being dependent upon the validation of others. When you're taking time to get over that need to feel worthy, being dependent upon someone else to give you that feeling of worthiness, feeling unworthy when somebody else is being mean to you, be kind to yourself, love yourself, and understand that it's like a drug. Like with a drug, it takes time to wean off it. Similarly, when it comes to relying upon yourself, loving yourself, and not relying upon another for validation. It's a powerful quote from Jessica Madden. I love it. Um, then I quoted from Jessica Madden. When dealing with a bully, from the disrespect from another, a nasty person, either say quietly or out loud, I am sorry you are in pain, I acknowledge your pain. Absolutely try this. Now, be wary of the fact that the other person will not admit their pain. On the contrary, they will, they will most likely stamp their feet in a state of aghast. Don't pay attention to it. Their soul got the message and you will see the signs thereafter. I also love this amazing quote from Jessica Madden, which reads as follows. Um, this is a powerful one. 
Just a moment. Just a moment. This was my second quote yesterday. It reads as follows. When you're dealing with the nastiness of a person, look into the future and imagine yourself expressing, wow, after you hear about the trauma, the trauma of that person was carrying all along. This is a powerful, powerful quote. It's amazing when you say, the present moment doesn't define the whole reality. Yesterday and tomorrow are part of it. I'm pretty sure that when I reach into the future, when I get to the future, I will see and I will hear about the fact that this particular person was struggling with trauma. When I was dealing in the legal arena, trying to be reconnected with my offsprings, I came across one particular individual who really, really could never smile, who really only had negativity to say about me. And every time I tried to be nice, it was like talking to a wall. This particular person, I am 1000% certain, is carrying a past trauma which will come out one day. She can't smile. She can't be a decent person because she's carrying past trauma. Today I'm going to do a call out. I'm going to say to her, Dear Mrs. Sorry, Dear Miss Anonymous, I acknowledge your pain. I acknowledge what you have been through in your childhood. I acknowledge it. I am the light, the light I am. I am the light, the light I am. Why did I say that? And why did I pick on particularly this person? Because I very much feel and know intuitively that this particular person is suffering and is grappling with past trauma. That's why she never gave me the light of day. I forgive her. Dear Miss Anonymous, I forgive you. I forgive you. You are forgiven, and I forgive myself too. That's today's sorry. That's today's amazing, powerful message, which incorporates the concept, the idea of loving yourself, being kind to yourself, ascend on your spiritual journey, love your spiritual journey. But don't worry when you fall back. Don't worry. When you feel unloving towards yourself at times. And don't beat yourself up for it. Don't beat yourself up for it. You're grappling with past guilt, past trauma, past lack of forgiveness towards yourself. You're scarce and you're finding forgiveness towards yourself. Nonetheless, love yourself for it. It's okay. It's okay. That's my amazing message today. I also wanted to point out that the amazing festival of Halloween is coming up. It's a very spiritual journey. It's a powerful, sorry, it's a very spiritual festival. I said that word journey quite a few times. I guess that's why my mind is like journey, 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 journey. No, it's a festival. Maybe it's also a journey. It's a, an amazing spiritual festival. And it's meaning I've only begun to understand in the last few years. As a child growing up, I was petrified on the night of Halloween. We stayed indoors. It was scary. Where I lived, you could get yourself badly hurt. If you walked out on the night of Halloween. Thank goodness it's not like that anymore. And whenever there's something. I also realized that whenever there's a spirituality. Which is enveloping. Which is developing around you. Those who are not in the spiritual paradigm. Act out. And do what they do. I'm going to talk more about the festival of Halloween. And it's amazing. 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 Fields. Of. Rather, dynamics within. I'm also going to talk about the fact that there's a, yet another Jewish festival today, the festival of Hoshana Rabbah, which quite literally means the plentifulness of the willows. In other words, okay, the actual translation of Hoshana means God, please help me, but through the, it, it is a reference to the willows which were um, brought in the 
temple and in Jewish synagogues around the world, they wave these willows and they bang them and they stamp them out, which correlates the concept of stamping out the idea and the concept of not believing in your own blessings and not believing in your own spirituality which you have within you. We're all godly beings. We're all part of God's essence. Remember that. We have amazing, amazing qualities and amazing, amazing powers. Never, ever forget that. And never allow anybody to make you forget that. I look forward to seeing my next video. Oh, my next video will not be coming out until after the Jewish festival. There's another two Jewish festivals coming up after today. So today's Hashanah Rabbat. Tomorrow is the day we pray for rain. And the day thereafter is the day we celebrate the, the finishing of the Torah. We have finished the five books of Moses. That's why we celebrate that day with dancing and dancing around with the Torah, with um, the Holy Book, the Torah, the Bible. So for the next two days, you won't see me. I will be back Tuesday night. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I love you.